da je ljubav između ostalog možda jedan od najdelotvornijih lekova. Ovamo te i kua mai a mai topo i loka a kama lamu lama Ovamo no ka ha kama le ola Ovamo no ka poho Ke ka ele no maho a e no ka e pa Ka i ke kino iho na me a pa Ka i ao i ku u ki o na noi noi ma baho a e no ka e pa Ka ho u mao mao o na ma nao a me ma me a pa Uvao no ka ho a me ka ha Te huna ka makane na he na he Te ka hua huna o kumo liko o vao no ka i I am the eye I come forth from the void into light. I am the breath that nurtures life. I am that emptiness, the wholeness beyond all consciousness. The eye, the ear, the all. I draw my bow of rainbows across the waters. The continuum of minds with matters. I am the incoming and outgoing of breath. The invisible and touchable grief. The undefinable. Adam of creation. I am the Earth. So welcome, Halia Kala. Thank you very much. Uh, we have lots of questions for you. And some are, you know, come from my own students and the, the questions that repeat itself. But first, I would like to ask you how you, what did you think the first time you, you went to a whole Ho'oponopono training? A lot of people say, what? Because I say, thank you, I love you. What would you tell those people? Well, I think I, I lasted only um, the first break. And uh, Morna, said to, Morna said to the class of about 40 people, do you see this Chinese man sitting in the middle of the table? And I, I said to myself, oh my God, I'm in the wrong place. So after the, during the first break, I went home. You know, some, some people now uh, hear us uh, saying these things and they also want to get up and leave. Yeah. So, how many trainings it took you to really sit and get all the information? Probably about four or five. Four or five. Yeah. And then working with Mona, how was it? Uh, it? It was pretty easy to work with her because I think most of the time, if not all the time, she was cleaning. She wasn't working on me. And it took me years to realize that's what my job is, is to just work on myself and, and not be concerned about anybody. Uh, sometimes, uh, I, you know, uh, people ask you this, and you said that maybe what it convinced you the most was that situation with your daughter and the skin rash and the problem. Well, that was seeing, seeing her rash leave almost in uh, a month convinced me that maybe I should be hanging around with this lady. And, and many times you tell us, you know, that this is not what I learned at school, that yeah. I got to, you know, in a school I learned you, you have to pay attention, showing compassion yeah. for people yeah. and things. So what is it that to be next to Morna that didn't do that, but suddenly people felt better? I, I don't know. Um, I, well, I didn't know then, but I know now that Morna was doing her cleaning. I see. Um, um, Haliakala, a lot is going on right now with the law, they, what they call the law of attraction. So what, what is that law of attraction or there are natural laws that we maybe are not aware of but they, that we can work with? Well, first of all, only God knows. And God could be called the I am, it could be called anything, but I prefer to call the uh, divinity I, okay? And so since I, I came to the realization that only God knows then I should be uh, in a relationship with the divinity and the relationship is making taking 100% responsibility for whatever is going on in me that I experience as judgment, as problem. Yeah. Uh, since you were a little kid, you believe in God? You always believe in God? or when, you I, see... was, when I was a little kid, I could see things. Um, I could see things that that for me it was natural so i would play with these things and then i went i remember like either second or third grade i shared that with 
uh, with the class in show and tell, and that was not the, the thing to do. The teacher didn't like it, huh? Uh, yeah. 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 They wanted to, did they label you or something? No, I think they called my mother. They called your yeah. mother. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did that work with uh, raising teenage daughters? You know, when you, did that change your relationship before and after Ho'oponopono? Yeah, I realized um, that my children came into my life only because God is, gave me one more chance to make amends with them. And so I could see them as God created them, pure in heart. Yeah. But the only way I could do that was to let go of the world. Whatever judgments, whatever thoughts I had with them, that's something I need to let go. And I did. I worked on it. And I continue to work on it now. I remember once you told me, you know, our kids, or you told us in a class, uh, you know, our kids are not here for us to tell them what to do. They yeah. are here so that they don't. You know, fall in the in the swimming pool, or they get burned with fire. Well, I think I think I think what's important to realize that only really really children come to to be in our lives is because divinity says I'm going to send them, and they're going to bug you, and the bug you is to remind you you should let them go, and give them back to me. And so with my children, every time I do the cleaning, it's about letting them go back to God, and only God, since God created them, only the divinity knows what's best for them. So my job as a parent is to cut my ties with them and give them back to God. Okay. So one of the questions that uh, it repeats is how is it that you can do this work 24 hours a day? And, and I'm, I'm thinking of that because when we tell people that you can do the cleaning while you sleep, plus you can talk to, it's better to talk to people, your kids, uh, your spouses, uh, while they sleep. Yeah. So could you... Share with us. The most important right. thing is to realize that all of your problems are in you. So if I visit with somebody and they're telling me they have a headache, then the question is, what is going on in me that I experienced them telling me that they have a headache? So the, the, the cleaning has to be ceaseless. You cannot stop doing the cleaning. The other thing is, is there's a part of us called the inner child, what, they, mm -hmm. what the Hawaiians call the uni apili. That part of you is like a computer bank. You you need to work with that part of you to re-educate it so that it will do the cleaning for you automatically. Uh, and, you know, since uh, the Unihipili is, the, you always said, our best partner, yeah. you know, if we are yes. looking for the correct partner, uh, there it is. Um, if you can tell us a little bit more about, because I know the Unihipili is the manifesto also in our life, is the one that makes the connection when we do this work. Yeah. So the, only, the subconscious is, or the only pili is where all the information is stored since the beginning of creation. So if you're looking for a problem, it, it's stored as information in the subconscious. So you have to be willing to teach the subconscious how to let that go, how to let go of memories replaying problems. And so I spend, as you know, when you, you come to into the air, my area, I will be sitting down on the floor and doing my cleaning and then also talking to the subconscious. This is what we're gonna to do today. So we're only here to clean. And so I would ask you humbly, humbly to help me with the clean. When did you start uh, really communicating with this part of you or finding out? At the uh, beginning. Okay, because uh, as you know, many times you tell me, I don't know how you guys do it. You go out without cleaning, yeah. but we do because yeah. we don't know better. Yeah. So um, in your case, um, how would you say to people that maybe, you know, we cannot see, we cannot hear? We, I personally don't have any doubt about how this works, but some people are still stuck maybe and wanting to understand this stuff. You cannot understand this. Understanding is knowledge. And what we're looking for is wisdom, and only God has that wisdom. So for me, for example, coming to this place, um, this beautiful house and this beautiful property, before coming, I would talk to the property and say to the property, the place, I'm coming and I would, I'm only coming to make amends. I'm not here to have a, do the video. I'm not here to do anything. I'm so please let me know if there's anything I need to make amends for. And I began the cleaning before and while I'm here, as you and I are talking, I'm the cleaning is going on. And then when we get ready to go, the cleaning will be going on ceaselessly. Because this property is, is like a human being. It, it suffers, it has 
it, lo it has longing, and so my job is to remove anything in me that causes the property to suffer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, many times you, you share about how you see maybe somebody talking and, yeah. you know, very uh, politely, and then the inner child's fighting or, yeah. or something. So yeah. could you tell us a little bit? Yeah. Well, if you, if you read the book, Con The uh, User Illusion, one of the things you'll come across is that 11 million bits of information playing per second, and, and the conscious mind is only aware of 15 of them. And so I'm, since I don't know, and divinity knows what those memories are replaying, then I'm willing to do the cleaning, because then divinity will come down and make any changes in me that I need to make. But the wonder of the Ho'oponopono is that whatever gets let go out of you by divinity gets let go of the whole universe. So as long as you're at peace, the whole universe is at peace. If the universe is, is having problems anywhere, then the question is, what's going on in me that I need to take care of? Then? We always say peace starts with us. Yeah. And, and what about how that's applied to, you know, relationship when we are looking for the perfect person and then we find out that the perfect person is the, that will give us more opportunities to play, <laughs> that will show us, you know, what to play. The, the perfect person you would find in a pure heart. So if you're, if you're at pure at heart, that anyone that you see, the relationship, whether the relationship is with this plant, the relationship is with the camera, relationship is with it. As long as you're at zero, the relationship is always perfect. So the relationships have nothing to do with, quote, what is out there. Relationship has to do with you. And as long as you're at peace with yourself, relationships work. Yeah. Okay. So how this applies to business and money? Well, I think that it's the same thing. If, uh, if, you, if you're in a relationship with a business or with money, as long as it's zero, that money and that and that business can do what it came to do. But if you're you're you put money first, you put the business first, then you're going to be in trouble. Like you will see now, the whole stock market, the whole business community is goofy. But for me, the, the money only comes from God. Perfect relationship only comes from God. And my job is to make sure that I'm at zero. So divinity will give to me what is perfect and right for me. Yeah. So um, for somebody that doesn't know anything, what would you say, where, where do we start? Because people say, how do you start really trusting yourself? How do you start the cleaning? How do you, you know, how do you trust enough that, you know, you just say thank you and you let go because you know God is taking care of it? Wow. I think, first of all, one has to realize that one is created in the image of God perfect in every way. And, and for us, perfect means being infinite and being zero. That means no, no constraints, no borders, no nothing, no judgment, no right, no wrong, no good, no bad. As long as you're willing to be at that state of mind where you're pure in heart, everything will work for you and everything will work for everybody else. Uh, you say the problem is not a problem unless we say it's a problem, and the problem is not the problem, but how we react to the yeah. problem is the problem. Uh, could you comment on that? Because, uh, you know, some people come to Ho'oponopono because they think, oh, then I will not have any problems. You know? yeah. Well, first of all, you're only here as a prodigal child. What does that mean? You're here because divinity loves you so much that divinity is giving you a chance to make amends so that you can be free of your past. Once you're free, then everybody else is free, and then everybody get, you get what you need, which is inspiration, and everybody else gets it. So ultimately, you're responsible. 100% responsible. Well, uh, that's great. You know, for me, for, uh, realizing, and as you know, you know, uh, I had to take a couple of trainings in order to get to that place, but I always share with people how I was one of those students that came and told you, I think, I think, but it doesn't work. And and you came back and said, no expectations. So um, I don't have any doubt since, since I let go of expectations and being willing to be patient, you know, but um, how, how do you work with, with the problems again, you know, because um, when something comes up, what is it that you do? Because people said, okay, okay, you always tell us clean. But the question is, okay, 
How does it look the cleaning to you? Well, if you're if you're looking for the bank, let's say you're looking for wealth, it, you can only find it with a pure heart. You can only find it at zero. So the idea is you have to give up the world. You have to give up what you think is money, what is good about money, what is good about you have to give it all up. And so the way you do it is you do it simply by saying I love you, thank you, drinking the soul water, doing the seaport product. But ultimately you will you will find the, the divinity only at zero, only in a pure heart. And if you're not there, you're for, you'll be forever have problems. Okay, so uh, many people ask, okay, you say I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning, or clean. So how, if, what, how does that look, clean? Well, first of all, um, you can't treat the I or God as a concierge. You can't say I'm going to clean and I want this. Wanting something is uh, is really go, is a desire. And do you know the definition of desire? No, please. Yeah, the definition me. is being away from the Father. B means away and sire means Father. So anytime we want something, it's a desire. You're looking away from God. So the Ho'oponopono is about erasing desire called memories we playing so that you can be at zero in the, at a pure heart. The Ho'oponopono is only about getting you back to the original state of a pure heart. So, who is your enemy? Well, Jesus said, love your enemies, but who is your enemy? Can you tell me who your enemy is, uh, Mabel Cott? The memories inside of yeah. us. So, and who are your neighbors? The memories inside. So, Jesus, all these points that Jesus made is so with the Buddha, is so with them. Your enemies are only your memories you're playing. Your neighbors are your memories you're playing. Ho'oponopono is about erasing those things and taking you back to a pure heart or zero or what Shakespeare called blank. Well, uh, before you mentioned about, you know, like the crisis with the, you know, this economy yes. and how that means putting money first. So yeah. we are talking about Ho'oponopono being putting love first. No, we got to be more specific. We're talking about putting, putting yourself first, yourself being infinite zero, created in the exact likeness of God. So you're putting that part of you that is zero first, because at zero, that's where you're going to find, you're going to find the right relationship, the right idea, the right source of the world, but you can only find it at a pure heart. You can't find it any other place. Okay. So when we are saying thank you, love you, is those enemies that are really inside of us. Yeah, so the enemies. Our neighbors, like you said, are inside of us. Yeah. So everything is inside. Yeah. What we got to be clear of is that the, the problems are in us. They are nowhere else in the universe. So it's like giving up the world. What is the world? Give, giving up our past memories of what we think is right, what we think is wrong, what we think is good, what we think is bad. Because all of humanity have a belief of what is right and wrong. And what the Vinny say, there's no right and wrong. At zero, you're perfect. You, you don't go into right and wrong. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's, that, that reminds me of like, always the question is, what if I have a good memory? Yeah, yeah the, the, there's no such thing as a good memory. You're either zero and infinite or you're hanging around with, uh, well, what about my love for my children? Well, but if you were at zero, your children would get divinity's love, not yours. You want the love of God, not the love of what you think is right for your children. Yeah. Okay, so um, going back to the, all this movement of the secret and the law of attraction that we mentioned before, uh, people say, oh, visualize, think positive, you know. And could you refer to those 15 uh, thoughts per second that we are maybe... Well, first of all, you have to know that, the, that divinity is always talking to you. Always. But, but we blunt that. We blunt the talking and the hearing of divinity with what we think is right and perfect for us. And as long as we think, think being memories we're playing, this is right and wrong, and this is right or good or bad for me, then we don't hear the voice of divinity. So if the voice is always there, the light is always there, it is always there. But we blunt that by, by having opinions, beliefs about what is right and wrong. So the Ho'oponopono is about erasing the memories allowing the light to come through and the light but the light was always there always uh could you explain to us a little bit of how this cleaning works it's not that we are the ones erasing 
you know, but uh, how really it works. We are giving permission, but maybe you can explain it better. Well, it's, it's really simple. Um, what we're saying is the problem is in me, the problem is a memory replaying, and I'm saying to God, I would like to make amends for that memory replaying my problem, replaying disease, replaying suffering. And I'm sorry, please forgive me for those memories. And divinity then has the ability to erase, it's called transmutation, can erase it. But if we don't say we are responsible, it's never going to be erased. And most people think it's you. Yes. It's an Argentinian in here. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And maybe they are right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always tell people that when I found that I was 100% responsible, actually I found freedom. Yeah. I found freedom of not depending on other people doing or changing or saying for me to be happy. So if I'm not, I'm happy, it's my problem, really, yeah. you know, because I'm choosing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what about that visualization and that feeling or seeing yourself in the house already or, you know, driving the car already? Well, if the light is always on, the light of the divinity, and that light being saying, I know what's right for you. I can give you everything that's perfect and right for you. Why, why would you visualize? Can you ask me that? Why would people visualize if, if whatever is right and perfect for them, they already have? Why, why would you visualize anything? Can you explain that to me? So, well, because uh, we are not in zero. <laughs> oh. So we don't know who we are and we think we need those things in order to be happy. Yeah. That's the way I, I, I For me, I'm, I clean with that notion that I know better for me than what God knows for me. I'm always cleaning on that. Cleaning that only God knows what's right for me, what's right for you. And as long as I'm zero at a pure heart, whatever is perfect and right, I get. I never worry about money. I never worry about relationships. I never worry about any of those things. I'm only concerned about what I'm cleaning. That's what I'm concerned about. Well, in one of our, the last classes that you joined us, the teleclasses, uh, you mentioned something that really got to us. And every time, you know, that we, you know, remember we actually share. When you, when you said, I don't know you guys, uh, what you guys clean to have money or to have a, a relationship, he says, I clean to be with God. Could you please uh, yeah. tell us a little I, bit? I'm cleaning to be as God created me, pure in heart. That's what the message of Jesus, being pure in heart. The message of Buddha, being void. The message of Shakespeare, being blank. Because only at blank am I in a perfect relationship with God. I mean, there's no other perfect relationship than than being a pure heart, one lined up with God. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to share, uh, you have shared in through these years many stories about Morna yeah. and I'm going to uh, mention some and see yeah. uh, you you told me that Morna was afraid when she was a, cha a, cha a small child to cross to yeah. go across the street and she would see this huge hand yeah. coming from the heavens could you tell us? Yeah, that? that's, that's the presence of God always so when we are fear, we when we into fear or we into lack, then we have shut off God's light but the divinity's light is always on i mean it's never not on so the idea is to let go through cleaning uh, being repentful and saying i'm sorry please forgive me for whatever is going on in me that i block the light which is always present yeah okay what about like talking to plants mona used to go and i know uh, you mentioned that she he, she was able to hit his her own mother yeah uh like talking to asking plants what the, yeah. For example, I remember one day Morna, Morna was asked that about a particular person, and she said, okay, you give me a day. And during the day, the next day, she went out and she visited a field. And she said to the field, here's the person that needs our help. Can you raise your hand and let us know? So certain plants put up their hand. She went and gathered them. She, she did whatever, and she gave it to the guy, and the guy got exactly what he needed. So everybody has a different need, and so you can't be giving, treating people like they're cattle, or everybody gets the same medication. So the Ho'oponopono is about divinity knowing exactly who you are, exactly who we're talking about, and giving you, releasing what is perfect in life, and then giving you, in return, 
what's perfect in life for you. It's so simple. I mean, well, some people say it's simple for you. Yeah, uh, but I think that can be clean. You know, we're huh? stuck. We no, are but, stuck in well, thinking. only stuck because we don't clean. And we yeah. clean. Somebody said, I don't believe in that. I say, thank you. I love you. I thank you very much. And move on. You know, Jesus said that there are going to be certain people in which you will offer something and they will turn away from you. Well, you say big, thank you? Yeah, what's the big deal? And you just say, okay, see you in the next endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us about how you can hear like cars talking? How how, how your uh, you heard? Um, remember when you told us about your shoes, t telling you that it was going to rain? Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. Um, you know, it's nothing. Nothing. It's not such a big deal. The, the idea is that you're at zero, you'll hear God, whether it's in the shoe or a plant or the sky, and my friend over here and you, um, as long as you're at zero, you, you can hear things talking to you. That's the, that's the divinity in everything. So one day I, was, I came home from work and I took my shoes off like I, like I do here, and I was going to put my shoe in the closet, and my shoe said, I don't want to be there. And I said, okay, where do you want to be? I want to be outside in the in the on the balcony. I said, okay. So I'm walking out to put the shoes on the balcony, and then I heard the shoes say, "I changed my mind. I'm I want to be inside. Where do you want to be inside? I'm getting annoyed and irritable now." So I, I said, "In inside of the glass." So I put the shoe down, and I said to the shoe, "How come? You, first of all, you want to go out in the balcony. Why is it you want to be there?" The shoe said, "It's going to rain." So I looked out, like here. And it's no perfectly cloudless. And I'm going, listen, there's no cloud up there. The shoe say, in an hour it's going to rain. In an hour it rained. Because the shoe was had its own awareness. And it's an awareness of body. Yeah. So everything is sacred. What you do with your shoe, what you do with your clothes, it's sacred. Yeah. Uh, you told me stories like, you know, getting at the stop and then the car's talking. Oh, yeah. because my owner doesn't yeah. change my oil, doesn't yeah. take care of yeah. me. Yeah, I remember one day, Warren and I were going on the way um, to um, Washington, D.C., and uh, we came up to the stop sign, another came, car came up, and uh, my car, the car I was driving said, hello, how are you? And the other car said, uh, I just feel horrible. And the, my car asked, uh, how come? He said, well, the owner doesn't, doesn't care for me, doesn't change the oil, doesn't do any of that, but he wants me to... to to be okay. I said, well, um, uh, the, I heard my car said, but you can clean with that. Be 100% responsible. And the car said, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so the car, like most people, don't want to be 100% responsible. What uh, about like that time that you were uh, with Mona on the train? I think in some time, some, or, or no, the plane where it started uh, moving yeah. and turbulence. And, yeah. You look outside and Mona said, that's not what it is. Yeah. So like anything else, whether the plane is rocking or whether your dog is having problem or whether your child is goofing on, the question you have to ask yourself, what's going on in me that I experience that? And as long as you're willing to clean with that, everything else will be fine. The plane settles down, your kid goes off with drugs, your dog doesn't have any problems. I mean, in the end, it's in you. Yeah. Okay, we have some uh, weird tools huh, that we use, like the flight paper. Yeah. People love flight paper. Yeah. I talk about flight paper even in my book. Um, could you tell us the day that you heard a noise and you said, where was that? And you you heard oh, somebody throw the flight paper? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, for us, we say thank you, I love your flight paper. And we say, yeah, really, something happened when we do those things? Well, I think first of all, you have to give, you have to say to those things like fly paper, I appreciate you. People don't say it, they just do it, but they don't have an appreciation for what they're doing. Um, so for me, I'm always talking to the cleaning processes. I'm saying to them, I love you. Thank you for helping me get out of this. And so they, they, they really appreciate that. So they will talk back to you. So one day I heard this thing go up. I just heard it in my mind and it went, boom. And I said, what, what was that? And the flight paper said, it's only me cleaning up. 
But one, one has to have an appreciation for life, for the plants. Because this plant, for example, if I say ice blue and I touch the plant, the plant will give me a treatment um, that I don't have to pay for. But I have done my cleaning, ice blue. Ice blue is a cleaning tool, removing whatever ties you have with the plant. Then I touch the plant and the plant will give me whatever is perfect in life coming down to the divinity. You're always getting it from divinity. You're not getting it from a guru or a master or a medical doctor. You're looking directly to God. And you're saying to God, I'm sorry, please forgive me. The ice blue is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And I touch the plant. Divinity will come to the plant and give you whatever is perfect in life for you. Um, uh, Eliakal, I always remember, and I was really amazed, and I shared this with people in trainings about the glass of water, yeah. because I do remember the glass of water, that, that tool came out in this consultation with a Spanish lady, and you asked me to go and grab, you heard, you know, about the glass of water. I saw the changes in people using it, you know, for depression yeah. and, and things yeah. like that, but, but I also remember what you shared in that consultation and you say, would you like to tell me what I see? And I see all these fairies, yeah. you know, on top of the glass yeah. and seeing God's work and going yeah. like, wow, this is, oh, they can see God's transmutation. Yeah. What happens is those fairies are like angels. So different people have different ways of explaining this. But, but you know, like the word Hawaii, for example, the word Hawaii, Hawaii at the end means water of life. This is why I'm drinking this. Because as I'm drinking it, I'm saying to the divinity, um, I would like to make amends for whatever is going on now that I'm not even aware of. Would you, would you free me from that, that information? So the divinity transmute whatever. And what do I know of being transmuted? I have no idea. But I, I know if I do my part, which to ask for a forgiveness, the divinity has to do its part. Whether well, the divinity is in Guadalajara on vacation, the divinity has to say, okay, I heard you, and can do the cleaning, yeah. So uh, the idea is always, you know, working no matter what, no matter where you are, what the situation is in front of you, it's always about taking responsibility yeah. and knowing that that is in you. You and I are, and everybody else, including the plants, the, the glass, the table, we're only here on this, on this lifetime to say to the divinity, I'm sorry, please forgive me. There's no other purpose for being And as long as we're willing to do that, then divinity is willing to transmute or erase whatever is not zero, not, not infinite, and so that we can come back home to this, to the light. And that's the only purpose why I'm here. Okay, so a lot of people know about the solar water and how to prepare it, uh, the blue water. But uh, during these years, and I've been part of being there as a witness of how yeah. all this information sometimes comes. And uh, now we have the blue so seaport water, but you created the seaports. And maybe if you can, I, I have to tell you because I maybe I'm not that sensitive. Sometimes for curiosity, I tell people that can you know, feel this kind of energy. And I give the seaport program. I say, you tell me what you, what you feel, you know, or what you get. And I say, oh, wow, and I, yeah, this is like a vortex. Oh, yeah, and this is uh, some energy, and I can feel it. So could you tell us a little bit? I was on a walk like I usually do in Woodland Hills um, several years ago. And as I was walking along, touching a tree, say ice blue, touching his tree along the line. As I was about to touch a tree, I heard, Go home and read page 103 of the manual. I made a note of that and I continued to walk and I went home and I opened up the page to 103 of the manual and, um, and that 103 second paragraph said, clean, erase, erase. Do you see that's the only purpose why you're here? So the seaport C means clean, E means erase, E means erase. And the port, then he says, is that you're coming home. It's like a ship on the seas just going up and down. And now you're going, oh, now I can come home into a safe port. And so a seaport is a cleaning process, whether it's a water, whether it's anything, the, the pin, the bookmark, the seal, it's about cleaning. Erasing, erasing. Helping us. You always said we can get, we need all the help we can oh, get. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's wonderful because you don't have to do anything but stick it on you. So I have I have a seaport pin on me, right here. Yeah. And as I'm mine too. and as I'm talking, um, divinity is. I'm saying divinity. Whatever I'm here at Joanne's place, I'm here with Rodolfo. I'm here with his partner. I'm here with the camera. I'm here with the trees. I'm here with Mother Earth. Whatever error that I've committed, I would like to make amends. So now I'm I, I have here. I have on my cell phone. I have um, the seaport seal, because divinity is saying mm, maybe five, ten years down the road, people are going to suffer from the use of cell phones. Because there are these electrical um, memories replaying a lot of its space that people are not aware of that they're going to end up with problems. And so for me, I just do as I'm told. Okay, so um, I would like to ask maybe something that we talked uh, before, but it is a question that a lot of people ask: is so how do you do the cleaning while you sleep? How is it that? that well, you work? Hopefully, you re-educated the subconscious, and the subconscious will do it. That's number one. Number two is you can get um, a down pillow and sleep in, and the down pillow works on memories that have to do with beastly part of, of man, anger, resentment, hate, lust, and, and all that. So you can do that. The other thing you can do, I, I wear, I always wear a seaport pin. So I mean, there's, there's never a point where you're not cleaning. I mean, that's the reason why I want to make sure. That I don't. The divinity doesn't foreclose on my soul because I'm not cleaning. Foreclose meaning dead, and uh, I want to be able to make, say to the divinity, "I'm cleaning. See somebody. Please do your part. What is your part? Erase, erase, erase." Yeah. I love when you when you tell us that cleaning is like paying off debt, yeah. you know, or depositing in this uh, spiritual bank, yeah. you know, and it's can gonna you, come back to us. Can you imagine being able to pay off your debt? By simply saying I love you, thank you, being drinking solar water, doing the fly paper, doing any of the eighty or so cleaning tools. I mean, all you have to do is say them. You don't have to. You don't have to understand them. Like you know, when I do the the, the um, training in Japan, the Japanese, like the Americans, have a lot of questions. I keep saying to them, you can erase that. You can say your questions. I love you. Thank you for coming up and have the divinity erase it because because questions. Are looking for knowledge, and and knowledge is not not where you want to go. You want the wisdom that only comes from God. Uh, what about riding what horse? When you tell us riding one horse, very important. Well, the riding one horse really comes back to yourself. Whether you're going to give yourself away to a guru or to a master or to a shaman or to a religion or to any, you you really want to give yourself back to God. And the Oponopono is about coming back home to zero where God is. Yeah, uh, I, I I understood it really clearly because you know talking about doing the cleaning 24 hours, you want uh, that unihipili, you know, your subconscious mind to be able to do it automatically like it does the breathing. So uh, the idea of the one riding the horse, uh, I understand, is also very important. For the only hippie to know what to do the next time, you know, a problem shows up yeah. in our life. What the only hippie, what the only hippie wants is freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from the suffering. That's what it wants. And the only way it can be freed is divinity has to erase the suffering. And if we don't take 100% responsibility, if we think that it's him to blame and George Bush to, and somebody else, we'll never, we'll never achieve that freedom. And so the freedom, the Oponopono provides freedom and clarity of mind, of pure heart. You always talk about clarity. Yeah. You have to, clarity yeah. is a must. Yeah. What would you say about that? Well, I think what happened in business, uh, the business thing, is, this, the business says, I know what I'm doing. But look at what's happened. But if you want to run a really powerful business, you have to be clear. And to be clear means to be at zero. And it allowed divinity to run the business in wisdom as opposed to running it in knowledge. I mean, I know people, for example, there's a cardiologist in Japan who was sharing, uh, when my last visit, who was sharing about the Hoponopono. And he said, usually in September and August, his business goes down. He says, for whatever reason, more and more customers, more and more patients are showing up, more and more. He, he said, I don't know how to, what to attribute that to. 
said, could it be the cleaning? I said, could be, maybe, perhaps. I have a person who, who is very, very successful in Hawaii, probably one of the wealthiest men in Hawaii. He knows that the cleaning is going to get him where he, he needs to go. So it only comes down to whether you're going to be in a partnership with God or you're going to be in a partnership with memories replaying stuff. Yeah. I remember about the psychologist that you sometimes share with us. That she was worried. She said, that I clean, I'm not going to have a patient. Yeah. No? And now she works less, yeah. makes more money. Yeah, same thing with uh, my friend Leslie. So Leslie finding out that that as she takes good care of herself to the cleaning, the divinity will send to her not just any patient, but the right patient for her to look at herself. And so now my understanding is, is quote, more people are showing up. She sleeps better. She's not she's not as tired like she used to. So the cleaning has really opened up for her how to be at peace and then allowing the divinity to work on the patients and not her. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I know I had another question, but um, it's. Uh... Maybe you could do the piece of eye prayer so we can pose, huh? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, I, I just wanted to do one more, but uh, it's just went. So, um, Haliakala, thank you. Sure. Thank you because uh, this gives uh, the opportunity, you know, to people to know a little bit more, to have you more, you know, close. And, and I'm sure, you know, these are many, many of the questions that people have uh, that would like to, yeah, but to remember know. questions are, can be erased yeah I, I know what i wanted and then we close it's about the intellect and how you kind of define it like this you know kind of um, um the deadly thing the thing that really hurts you know what happens with the intellect is the intellect says i know and the intellect does not know the intellect operates only on 15 out of 11 million bits of information. So for the intellect to say, I know, the whole universe just laughs. Says, what? They know? If they know, how can we have so many problems? And so the Oponopono is saying, I don't know. Only God knows. I'm only here to clean up what I think I do know. And as long as I'm willing to let it go, everything else will be Here we are back with Dr. Ijaliakala Hulen. So many questions. I hope you uh, enjoy the first interview. Let's see how this one comes out. But I actually made some notes because I said, oh my goodness, I have to remember to ask him these things. I know that you want to know. So, uh, Haliakala, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Okay. So, can we read the, or say the I am the eye sure, prayer please. together? Sure. So, I am the eye. I come forth from, from the void into light. light. I, I am the breath that nurtures life. I, I am that emptiness, that hollowness beyond all consciousness. The eye, the e, the o. I draw my bow rainbows, rainbows across, across the waters, the continuum of minds with matters. I am the incoming and outgoing of breath, the invisible, untouchable breath, the undefinable atom of creation. I am the eye. Well, thank you so much for accepting uh, another interview. Um, I would like to touch today into your experience with the board and uh, how that, because you know how people are amazed. So how did he do that? Do how, what now? Uh, in the mental yeah. uh, hospital and everything that happened. Yeah. So maybe you can kind of give us the insight. I know that a lot is going on in the internet, yeah. but maybe from you, coming from you, what was yeah. your experience back then? Well, the experience is, is always generated by insight. So it's very important to know that what we experience is caused by something in us and what we call memories we claim. So my only purpose for being on this planet is to erase memories in me that I, I, that I experience with problems and suffering. And so that's what I did at Hawaii State Hospital. I asked myself, what's going on in me that I experience people, either I experience them being angry, annoyed, irritable, and I just, that's just my own stuff, and I worked on that. I did the whole Um How many years you had previous of being practicing Ho'oponopono when you got to the hospital? One just one year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, about one year. 
So you pick up this uh, teaching really fast. Huh? No, I think Morna was helping with the cleaning. So Morna was helping yeah. with the cleaning. No, I can't claim anything. Okay, okay, but that's that's good. So and and also I know that one day you heard you are done. Yes, and one day I, I heard that and I went, oh no, um, no income, no nothing. Wait, wait a minute. Let me see if I can hear that again. But I heard it. Not only did I hear it. That's it. That day, I was not to come back. And in, with the state, you're supposed to give them two, uh, two weeks notice. But I didn't give them any notice. So now, the other thing that happened was um, they were going to have a party for me at the, at the facility. But I couldn't even attend that. Wow. So the eyes said, done, bye, go, leave. So wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I remember some anecdotes about that or uh, sharings that you did with us about people telling you in the, you know, in the hallways, they said, dog, you know I can kill you if yeah. I want to, no? Yeah. What was that well, experience? Actually, I wasn't in the hallway. I was in, I don't know where I was, but I was sitting down reading the newspaper, and I had my, my both of my feet up on the on the desk, and then he, this person came along and said, I can kill you. And then I said to him, and I don't even know why, but my response was, and you probably could do a good job. Wow. Yes. Um, I also remember uh, things like, I, I remember uh, Omaka Ogala that used to work with you in, in the hospital, that she mentioned how emotional she got the day that one of the patients actually took 100% responsibility and said, I am responsible. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can comment any of that or the changes that you've seen in the people, you know, before your I, very I think, eyes. The, I think the most important change for me, I, I experienced, again, it has to be an, an, an internal experience, was, was the impact on the staff. And how, in my experience, they, they found more time to hang around with, with the, the patient, to be there, to play cards with them, to help them start uh, money-making projects like uh, baking cookies and that stuff. So, I mean, that where the I saw the change. Well, now, if you were only practicing for a year, Bonobono, I'm sure that was kind of shocking for you to see. Like, you know, students come and say, it could be the clinic. Um, as you can see, I never get very excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you just, it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was like, oh, like that. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, so you were like that before that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned also about the toilets running by itself, yeah. nobody there, the, yeah. the uh, painting peeling, yeah. you know, the, the plants not growing. Yeah. Yeah. What I didn't realize then until maybe two or three years later was that building, I believe, housed um, people, people who had tuberculosis. And so I suspect maybe so, several of them died. I'm just assuming that, you know. And when people die, if they die uh, not connected to the divinity because they're, they're suffering, then, they, then their souls get earthbound. And uh, I suspect maybe I'm speculating that those people were using the bathroom and flushing the toilet. Yes, uh, yes. Now, uh, actually, one of my other points I said I don't have to forget was about entities. Yeah. Because people have a lot of questions about entities and because I know that that's a lot of the stuff that we need to clean and we are not even aware because yeah. we cannot see them or experience. Like even now as I'm watching, I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of gathering of earthbound spirit. Oh, wow. And an earthbound spirit is is that part of the self called the subconscious and the conscious. So what happens is if people die, at, if people transition at a time where they're not connected totally to the, the divinity, then their soul gets earthbound, and the soul being the subconscious and conscious, yeah. So uh, you, you suspect they are here, right, like right now, some of us, because uh, of the cleaning and what we can yeah. do, they are coming to get the information, so... Well, I think they're coming because um, hopefully we're cleaning and it's an opportunity to set them free. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can send yeah. them to the light. Yeah. Okay. Well, divinity can send them to the light. Yes, I mean, we... Can. We get permission. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, you know, that that actually, that question of permission came up yesterday um, uh, by one student, and it says, is 
as cleaning or is it as just the giving permission, you know, Anna? We don't give permission to anything. What we're doing is we're saying we're responsible. And so the responsibility is we have stuff in us called memory we claim that create problems and which mean have connecting to earthbound spirit, have problems with the land. And so we're petitioning divinity by through the conscious going down to the subconscious, up to the superconscious and up to the we're asking divinity, please set us free and setting us free and who will get free and what memory get away. We don't we, that's not our responsibility. That's the divinity. Now when we say entities, uh, some people call it ghosts. Is it, would you say it's the same term, or in some cases could be ghost? Or I'm saying I'm defining an earthbound spirit as one who who is a soul consisting of a subconscious and conscious mind. Yeah. That is a start yeah, here that, that didn't go through. They didn't go because they were stuck in memories at that point. Okay. So now you and I are doing the cleaning here. Well, at least I am, <laughs> and so you can see things just move into the light because. I'm saying to at this, this moment, and I'm only here to clean, is I, I would like to be responsible for whatever so I can be free. Yeah. Uh, one day you told me, you guys clean for what you can see or what can experience. Yeah. If you would see what is around that you cannot see, then yeah. you would be clean. This is why you should be cleaning um, ceaselessly and non All because, the time. Because there's always stuff going on for which you're not even aware. 11 million unconscious stuff going, data going. So I'm always cleaning, drinking my solo water, doing the breathing. I'm cleaning with the camera, with the place, and I have that sound. But yeah, I mean, that's my only responsibility. Okay, since we are talking about entities and not that we can compare them, but uh, could you tell us about a little bit about fairies? I, I can remind you of some stories. You remember in the consultation where the glass of water tool came out and you said, uh, would you like me to tell you what I see? And you saw these fairies at the edge of the glass, and they could see the transmutation, actually. Yeah. And fairies are really divine beings. They're, they're kind of like us, but they're not stuck in our stuff. So when we are when we are 100% responsible and do the cleaning, they're happy because it, it, it lifts the darkness, and they get to see the divinity more and more. So fairies are kind of divine beings like us, but... Uh, they're not stuck in our in stuff that we hang around. Yeah. Okay, so um, I remember uh, you had somebody that had cut some trees, yeah. and then you would hear the rattling of the, yeah. and yeah. it was this fairy saying, "Well, you know, yeah. uh, like so, they destroy their home." Yeah. So when you when you're about to do something like cut trees, and hopefully you're inspired to do it, and you're not just doing it because it's in your, the tree's in your way or something like that. But, you know, the trees like these trees will be how many, many beings. And part of those beings uh, could be fairies. And so when we cut something, we actually throw people out of their homes, and so they get picked off. And so they're going to rattle your place because they're saying, well, you, you, you're kind of buzzed up, we're going to buzz you with that. You know? we, we had a case like that. And, and somebody actually had to say, I'm sorry, to do the cleaning, and then it's done. But one, one should be moved by inspiration, not by... I, I remember you sharing about people maybe doing the cutting of trees without cleaning, yeah. uh, doing that kind of jobs yeah. even, that then they had problems with, with their legs, yeah. remember, or their car having yeah. problems. Yeah. And when you ask what, what is it that you do for a living, you found yeah. out that that's the well, kind of work they did. A lot of people who have um, um, art, what they experience is arthritis in their, in their hands, uh, many of those people are bricklayers, many of them work with the earth, and so it's kind of like cutting things down and, and the fairies are, are kind of ticked off. It, one has to always be cleaning so that when you work with the earth, you're, you're, not, you're, you're working divinely, so you're inspired to move as opposed to thinking that you need to, you need to do like, like based on memories of things. Yeah, this is what I do, and you do it, you know, you get problems. So. Okay, so well, uh, it could be also like uh, going back to the entities or things, things that are around us that are affecting people, you know, with depression, people yeah. are very 
um, anxious, people f with a lot of fears or things that could be affected. And, and that's why the cleaning is so important because we never know what's going on. Well, depression and any kind of problem, no matter what the problem is, is a problem being experienced again. It's a memory replaying, like Shakespeare said, there's nothing new. So if you have a problem like a kick in your neck, you've had it before, and now the chance to work on the memories that create that. But most people think, for example, um, diabetes, most people think it's a physical problem, but it's a memory replaying. You've had it before, your family has had it, ancestors have had it before. And if you all, you work on the physical part of it, it won't go. I don't care if you, it looked like it. You know, it's better to clean the memories that create those problems. It's always a memory in you that you need to make an input. Okay, the other part that uh, that I think is very important or people want to know is more about the unihipili, you know, that perfect partner, like you say, we are looking for the perfect partner, yeah. that it is, you know, that inner uh, child in us. Yeah. Um, uh, remember, uh, the story that you used to tell us when you were in Hawaii and getting on the exit that you always did, and you heard this voice that said, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't take that exit if yeah. I were you. Yeah. Again, a, a problem is always a memory replaying. I want to make that point over, and the memory is always in you. So when, and when I look at you, I'm not seeing you. I'm seeing my my memory or my inspiration of you, and so I'm always thinking that. So, in the subconscious, the subconscious has experienced a problem before, and so it knows what a problem is. So I'm driving, getting closer to the off ramp. I always go home that way. Always, never, never. I'm like a rat in the maze. And then one day I heard that I heard that part of me, which I didn't know, said, "Hello." I wouldn't go that way today. Well, the intellect said we always go that way. You're always pushing down that part of you that what we call the intuitive part of you okay and so i kept going and he said i wouldn't do it i kept going and finally i went down on the over ramp, down on the ramp and there was an accident so i had to stay there a couple hours because that accident was so horrendous and that that part of me said i told you something okay. but it's just a memory so how do we know when it's intuition and when it's inspiration would, and the difference maybe you can explain? Out. I wouldn't even go that route. I would just do constant cleaning. So whatever we we hear, we just keep cleaning oh, and yeah. we don't need to really know. Yeah, because if you don't, if you, let's say you're, you're trying to decide that without an inspiration, you're stuck now. You're engaged yes. and you're, that means you're, everybody else is there. You, you've caused everybody else to get stuck. The whole point of it is about constantly asking the divinity to disengage us from the memories we can come. Okay, it, but in any case, for some people that sometimes are confused, what is the difference between intuition and inspiration? I would erase it. I would clean. So I would, this is the way I would do it. I said, whatever is going on me that's replaying memories that I'm trying to figure out the difference between inspiration and uh, memory, I love you, thank you, like with any of those things. So, Okay, but we could say that intuition is more of the memories and things that happen intuition, that will happen again. Intuition is memory in the subconscious, which is different from inspiration, because inspiration comes directly from God or from the infant. Yeah. Okay, okay. Anything uh, that you would like to share with us that you think it's important based on your experience and your years, the things that you see that we cannot see, or how God works, the, uh, things that you've been wow. amazed by. Yeah, I know that we are always amazed by the way that God works. The, but the, the solution to all your problem is cleaning. It, 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 not thinking about it, not engaging, but clean, erase, erase is the only purpose for it. If we're willing to do that, then we can, we can live with fun, live with inspiration. So can you tell me what your experiences have been? Well, I, I, I always tell people that in very difficult uh, moments, when I really clean, 100%, I go for the cleaning because I know I know I don't know better. I mean, I'm made, the most amazing things happen. And then I'm always asking, why don't I do this more? <laughs> you know, why don't I give it every time 100%? But it's like sometimes you still feel that you know or that you are going to solve it. This is why this is why drinking a soda water, using a seaport pen, having a candy cane in your house, putting reminders on the wall, molten lead is, is very important because you're not here to do anything. You're only here because you have problems. 
and the only way and the problem defined as memories replaying and the only way those memories will go it has to be erased you can't understand those things. it has to be erased and only divinity can erase it no okay uh could you tell us that story about you know this person this guy coming and asking Mona about the, if this is the person to marry you know and she's saying yes and uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, want to, I want to step one step backwards. Yes. We always are with people only for the purpose of thing. So the, the the tree, I'm here only because I'm getting a chance to play with them. The leaves, the camera, Rodolfo, Manuel. I'm only here to to do that. And so the idea of we're prodigal children. We we got stuck. And the only way to get rid of the stuff is to have to begin to erase it. It can't be done any other way. So my only advice, yeah, I guess advice, my only advice to people is, is clean season. Okay. So give you an example. In Japan, where, where I'm going to go back again, um, the Japanese have have a certain loyalty they, they, they have with people like we do. But for the divinity, let's say we work with these people on this project, but maybe on another project, divinity says, I want to have that those people working. As opposed to building what we think are networking, networking is for the birds. The idea is you want to be inspired to do something, not that you you have built some kind of structure. Okay. So, so um, the, my question about that, guy asking is this the right person to it's is like uh we we always have to be asking we always have to be uh yeah. cleaning yeah. we always have to be petitioning yeah. because whether it's right now so, maybe it's not right so, so for that person Mona said to him that person is the right person for you to marry okay so he came back because she married somebody else and he was kicked out he said i thought that was the right person for me to marry and the only response was, "Where are you cleaning?" Now, if he had been cleaning, he would have been. He would have one married her if he had been cleaning. This is what one is telling him. And then two, he would have found out she was the person to clean with. So yeah, I mean, but because he didn't do the cleaning like most people, like the people who are listening to us, they do the cleaning sometimes, and they say, "Well, how come it doesn't work?" Well, they're not cleaning. Well, why? Why? How come they're asking? Well. It's only about cleaning. It, it, we're not here for any other purpose. So I'm hanging around with you. And, Sorry. Yeah, and so I'm only hanging out with you because I have to make amends with you and your family relatives and answer. You see the leaf right there? Like yes. that one right there. See? Yes. That leaf is only there because I have to make amends. But most people don't get that. Yeah. Most people are trying to say, well, but I don't understand it. Well, that's a man we find you can say, Well, but I'm hanging around with this person I don't like. I, I, I for example, in Japan, um, there was this lady who had really a lot of trouble with this guy. I mean, just had a lot of trouble. So I go back the second time, she's telling me that. I go back the third time, I don't hear that anymore. I go back the fourth time, and she said, wow, you're not getting along really well. I said, oh. But that's the transformation when somebody takes 100% responsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could you tell us what the perfect relationship is? <laughs> Cleaning. Yeah, the one that will give you more perfect, opportunities. Huh? I think what Shakespeare says is probably the most important. To thine own self be true. As long as you're, you're if you're an art, everything around you, you're, you'll, fall, you'll fall in love with yourself. But we keep thinking, like in the health profession, where uh, my friend Leslie, the psychologist, said how a high rate of suicide. Oh, that comes from, we keep, we keep thinking we're going to help people. We're not here to help people. We're here to do it on ourselves, and as long as we're at zero, everybody else will be fine, including the camera. I, I, um, I always remember, and, and that's why I'm bringing up these stories, because I know it helped me to maybe realize somehow I didn't know as much as I thought I knew yeah, or that there were, yeah, and I still don't. But um, I remember when you said, you know, this this couple was kind of sharing on how much I love you and they were, and you could see the only people is fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
the 15, the 15 bits of intonation and saying, I love you, and the 11 alien said, <laughs> <laughs> That's what the perfect relationship, huh? yeah. a lot of things going on and that we need to the, clean. The, the, the perfect relationship is, is the one you have with your song. Okay. I mean, as long as you're fine with your song, you can do fine with everybody else. That person that you married maybe hanging around and, and, and going, you know, different places and maybe having relationships with other people. But if you're if you're okay, that that won't you won't that won't bother you. Because the only like reason it. that person is doing that yes. is because it gives you a chance. What is okay. going on in me that this is this is going on? And it's tough to do because most of the time yeah. we we get divorced. We are trying to change other people. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. In Washington, D.C., I had asked, I had made the point that how oh, women hate men. They hate us, I said. They hate us. And so I said to the group in, um, in Washington, D.C., I said, well, how many of you hate men? Oh, maybe one or two hands went up. How many of you are divorced? Wow. I mean, the hand went up. That, yeah. It, it, yeah, so not consciously. Again, the 15 yeah, bits of information. But, but it's hatred for self. Mm. So, uh, you know, when you come, if you read, you come down to biblical sayings that are so powerful. Divinity is saying, if you're not for me, you're against me. If, you're, if you don't love me, you hate me. There's no, there's no in between. I love you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and there's no, I love you. So, so we're either with ourselves or we're against ourselves. Yeah. I like the idea it's like yesterday um what is yesterday we had the when did we have this webinar yeah. uh two days ago yeah so i'm sitting in the room i'm going i hear hello sit down keep your mouth shut you better do your cleaning there's going to be a lot of stuff going to come up and sure enough it came up and but it would have been hell that whole thing would have gone down had i not done clean but why am i here Okay. Well, like when we think we are there to do something or yeah. to make money or yeah. you know to meet somebody and then we just need to know we are there just to clean yeah. so for example why are we in this spot on the earth why why if there are millions and millions of other spots we could be doing this this interview why on this spot i don't know but i'm cleaning but there's a reason, and I tell you, I can see part of the reason, you know. Um, but it's hard to realize at, at, in, the, in the course of your life that only the divinity knows you don't know anything, and you're only here to make an end. It's a, it's a big one. And I don't know too many people who have incorporated that, that message, unless you know a few of them. Now, uh, I would like to ask you about, um, you know, many times when you share um, the things that you hear, you know, wh when you tell us God is the best, uh, it's very fun, you know, yeah. to hang out with God yeah. uh, and things like that, that you said that if we hear some, if we clean and we hear something funny, yeah. do it because it's the right thing. You heard yeah. right. I, I think, I cannot imagine a God who created us that would hate us. Is it for you? No. no. Well, my experience now is no. <laughs> okay. So, so if something bad happens to us, whatever that means to the person, I can't imagine God doing that to you. I can't imagine God saying, I'm going to get you. I can't imagine. So, to be, to be really, I'm going to kind of a harsh response, it's stupid and idiotic to say that God did it to us. I, I can't imagine something who loves us absolutely would do it. So if God didn't do it to us, what's doing it to us? Well, it's uh, something we didn't finish in other previous existences. That's replaying again, and the divinity is just waiting. 